Since the inception of human life on Earth, we've been plagued by natural disasters, some more deadly than others. Earthquakes have collapsed buildings, hurricanes have caused catastrophes, and tsunamis have wiped away millions of humans. However, droughts are different. They don't dramatically announce their presence. What starts as just a week or two without rain ends up wringing the life out of us, damaging farmers around the world, depleting our groundwater, and additionally, like this experiment shows us perfectly, the dried soil can't reabsorb the water after a heat wave, and heavy rain afterwards causes flash floods. But thankfully, there are actually technologies which can prevent these conditions. Do you want to know more about droughts and their impact on us? How can we fight against them? Today, we're going to be talking about six technologies to fight extreme droughts, so stay tuned to find out. But before we get into today's video, I would ask you to give a thumbs up and smash the subscribe button so that, you know, you we know that you want to see more of this content. So without any further delay, let's get right into it. Since every organism relies on water to survive, periods of drought can be catastrophic. Animals and plants might suffer from dehydration and die instantly or over prolonged periods. But with enough time, the effects of drought will become an extensive web of ecological issues. Droughts kill the vegetation that terrestrial animals rely on for cover and nesting. So with so much vegetation dead and dry, large areas of land can become increasingly flammable. This could result in larger and more intense wildfires. It's pretty scary, right? But even after the dry spell, the impact of the drought is going to persist and it's going to continue to cause harm. It would take ages for the animals and plants to recover fully. Reservoirs and other sources of water might require weeks to refill. Burned forests might take decades to reach their past size and density. Droughts are getting worse and more fatal in recent years. France and Italy are experiencing the worst droughts in their history. 99% of Portugal is struggling to quench their thirst. More than 43% of the US was in drought by the end of July. Over 130 million people were affected. But thankfully, humans have advanced so much scientifically and technically that it's not as scary. We've researched and found means to reduce the impact of dry spells. And here are six of those interesting technologies. Number one, hydroponics. We've always learned that we need soil to grow plants, right? But did you know that we can actually grow plants without soil? In hydroponic growing, the roots of plants are in water and not soil, which cuts water usage by about 80%. The water is recirculated and there's no runoff or evaporation, so it's a great option for low water agriculture. Hydroponic greenhouses use less than traditional farming methods. They almost require no chemicals. In a lot of regions, space is at a premium and fresh food costs are too high for the low income population. That's becoming an even bigger problem in recent years. Food insecurity is a huge problem which has a number of complex causes. However, hydroponic greenhouses, so-called vertical urban farms, are the answer. And even better, there is the next level of this system combining hydroponics with aquaculture, called aquaponic farming. Special fish species are bred in a symbiotic ecosystem with the crops and vegetables. The water circulates through the whole system, so the crops and vegetables benefit from the nutritious water of the fish tank. It acts as a fertilizer. They filter out uh, the nutritious stuff and clean water circulates back into the fish tank. Now the benefits of this amazing technology are clear. An economic use of the water where huge amounts of food can be produced in small areas. This can counteract food scarcity in drought periods and even boost agriculture in urban areas. These systems can also be used in space exploration to ensure a fresh food supply as well. Number two, satellites. Farmlands in California use three to four times more water than their residents. And a lot of this water comes from aquifers. Before 2014, these farmers could take as much water as they wanted from these natural underground basins. Now, over time, this approach caused the underground water table to sink and led to depleted aquifers. To measure and keep track of the underground basins, NASA and researchers of the German Aerospace Center conducted the GRACE experiment, where two satellites named Tom and Jerry fly in a near-Earth orbit. They named them Tom and Jerry because the satellites fly in the same orbital line where Tom follows Jerry behind. I really like that sense of humor, not gonna lie. Anyways, these two satellites have been able to observe the gravitational changes and collect data since 2002. If there are irregularities in the gravitation, Jerry's gonna be affected earlier than Tom because he follows behind. If the groundwater levels fall in a region, the mass of the area also decreases, and therefore, the gravitational pull to the satellites. This leads to a minimal change of the distance between the satellites, and thus, critical groundwater levels can be detected and intervened. Number three, cloud seeding drones. Did you know that we can actually force the clouds to produce rain? Yeah, yeah, we're pretty cool. 
This sounds like it could be out of like a science fiction movie, but it's here. And with the help of science, it's definitely possible. Cloud seeding is the practice of adding chemicals like silver iodide to clouds to induce rain or snow. The practice has been around for decades. The United Arab Emirates have taken a new approach. They're using drones to zap clouds with electrical charges. This causes smaller water droplets to combine into larger droplets, which triggers a rainfall. That's good because it doesn't use any harmful chemicals. Yeah, that's really good. Really good. Yeah, cloud seeding could potentially increase rainfall by 35%, which would go a long way towards relieving drought and water scarcity. Number 4. Microdrip Irrigation Sometimes, not all drought-anticipating technologies don't have to be complex, or at least as complex as the previous ones. Simplicity can really go a long way. Sometimes, the answer to a problem is a really simple solution. The former chairman of Israel's water authority, Uri Shani, had a revolutionary idea that could change the course of the country. He realized that one way to alleviate water scarcity is through drip irrigation. Drip irrigation, which delivers water directly to the plant's roots, is one of the most efficient watering systems for growing crops. In conventional irrigation systems like sprinkler irrigation, water is sprayed over a large area, and a large part of it just evaporates. N-drip gravity micro-irrigation systems lets farmers take advantage of the efficiency and water conservation provided by micro-drip irrigation without the cost of electric or diesel fuel pumps. Israel has also now become an agricultural exporter and a water surplus nation by adopting micro-irrigation technologies, particularly drip irrigation, which saves roughly three-quarters of the water used in open canal irrigation. That's so smart and it's so simple, right? Anyways. There's also a new, more advanced method of this irrigation system, which brings drip irrigation to the next level that could actually help reduce the drastic effects of drought and water scarcity. It's called subsurface irrigation. It uses a network of polyethylene pipes located just under the ground surface to apply disinfected effluent into the root zone of plants, preventing airborne drift and minimizing runoff. This system is so much better than surface irrigation. It requires less maintenance, and there's less chance of surface saturation and effluent runoff. By reducing the chance of human contact, it also significantly reduces the public health risks. Number 5. Wave Power Desalinization System Resolute Marine Energy, a Boston-based startup, has developed a way to turn saltwater into drinking water by using the power of ocean waves. This has definitely relieved some water scarcity. This company developed a technology called Wave 20 that can completely power a desalinization plant with wave energy converters attached to the bottom of the sea. This converter moves back and forth with the waves and generates enough power to send the seawater onshore and power a reverse osmosis unit. Their current system can provide water to about 40,000 people a day. One of the largest desalinization plants, the Carlsbad in San Diego County, provides 50 million gallons of drinking water to 400,000 San Diego County residents every day. However, desalinization plants have one small disadvantage. While the Carlsbad plant uses a solar-powered generation system and energy-efficient motors, many desalinization plants use fossil fuels or nuclear energy, which I would assume partly explains environmentalists' hesitation around this technology. Number 6. AI Simulation for Fighting Forest Fire the threat of wildfires has never been greater than it is today. In recent years, countries around the world from the US, Argentina, and Brazil to Italy, Greece, and Australia have all been gravely affected by wildfires. We were all shocked as more than 24 million hectares burned during Australia's devastating Black Summer bushfire season of 2019 to 2020. The Yellowstone fires of 1988 collectively formed the largest wildfire in recorded history of the Yellowstone National Park in the United States. Starting as many smaller individual fires, the flames quickly spread out of control due to drought conditions and increasing winds, combining into one large fire, which burned for several months. The fires almost destroyed two major visitor destinations. That's pretty devastating, right? Wildfires have resulted in many human and animal deaths, as well as a loss of millions of hectares of forests. A recent UN Environment Program report warns that the number of wildfires is going to rise by 50% in 2100, and governments aren't prepared. Now, this topic has caught the attention of scientists and organizations in the field of artificial intelligence. Now, they believe that AI offers promising applications to pre-, intra-, and post-wildfire events. By generating more timely information about on-the-ground conditions and running computer programs to process massive amounts of data, we can actually now map fire perimeters in minutes rather than the hours that it can take now. 
Artificial intelligence therefore simulates a highly complex ecosystem like the Yellowstone National Park, and in this purpose, a deep neural network is trained and fed with data about the ecosystem, the environment, the wind direction, and all the information important to predict the wildfires. And later in an emergency, firefighters can adopt this information to fight against the wildfire, evacuate local populations, and prevent the fire from spreading even further. Okay, so all natural disasters are reminders that we really shouldn't take our life for granted, and we can't tame nature. All we can do is limit its effect on us. So what do you think of these technologies? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this one. So thanks for watching, and we'll be back with a new video soon. I'll see you in the next one, hopefully. Hmph. <laughs>